What's up guys? Welcome to The Quarantine. I'm your host Wolf, and today I'm going to be taking a look at a game called Elder Sign by Fantasy Flight Games. Now, Elder Sign plays about 1-8 to eight players, plays between about 45-60 to 60 minutes, and it is a cooperative, dice-rolling, push-your-luck game based in the HP Lovecraft universe. Now, I do have to mention I am using the Gates of Arkham expansion, and I'll explain why later in my final thoughts why. Uh, and again, as usual, this is a review. It is not a tutorial, so if I miss a few rules here and there, it, this is really just to give you an idea of whether or not this game is for you. That's pretty much all I have to say about Elder Sign, so let's just dive right into the overview, shall we? Alright, this is Elder Sign's setup uh, with the Gates of Arkham expansion. Now, I'll touch basis on why I'm using the Gates of Arkham expansion for this review and not the basic game in my uh, final thoughts, but... What you're going to do is you're going to set it up pretty much like this. You're going to draw six of these village cards. You're going to put them all out with three face up, three face down, just to start. You're going to put the clock at midnight. You're going to choose a character from this big old pile of uh, characters here. Um, you're going to find your appropriate uh, token here, which I just randomly grabbed one and put it on here. But let's just say the sexy ginger here is actually Rob Jenkins. And I have these. They're extra ones from other games. I honestly would have preferred Fantasy Flight just give me colored tokens rather than these stupid things, but whatever. Uh, I use these just because it makes it a little easier for you to see your token when it's out there. Your character that you choose has a special ability, of course, uh, mental damage, health, and then what your starting items are. So I've already drawn those. I have two pistols and a dagger. So these have little special things you're allowed to do. Uh, you're then going to pick an old one. So for here, we dare not say his name, so the king in yellow is who we'll be playing with. You're then going to draw one of these clock cards, and you're going to do nothing with it. You're just going to kind of sit it here. Now, on your turn, <coughs> you're going to take your character, and you're going to go to any one of the six locations or the street. And the street says uh, you may spend two trophies to do one of the following, and then move to the Arkham Adventure of your choice, and then it has these. So you could do that as well. Um, the face down cards, if you notice, they have a color on them. Uh, you can have green, yellow, or red. That just shows, gives you an idea of how hard that mission is going to be. And then when you move to an area, if it's face down, so we'll use this one as an example. If it's face down, you first have to do whatever it says. So this says, you may spend two trophies to gain one common item. That's pretty cool. Uh, but it says may, so I can go, ah, I don't want to do that. And you'll flip the card. Uh, so what you're going to do is, uh, like these ones say at midnight, so if these are face down mid during midnight, then you might have some issues because you're going to have to do whatever it says. But anyways, so let's say I'm going to move over here to the blood sacrifice. Now when you look at these cards, you have the trophy amount, you have uh, the name, some flavor text, any special conditions, so terror, which is the tentacles, uh, I would lose one stamina. So if I roll terror outside of what I need, so any excess terror, then I'm going to lose stamina, which is the red. Then you have different columns, and then you have a lose condition, win condition, or what happens. And then some of the cards also have an arrow. Now if it has an arrow, you have to complete these from top to bottom. Now if it doesn't have an arrow, you can complete them in any order you want, but you can only complete one row at a time. So if I go here, that's where I'm going to go. Now I have a choice to play some cards, so I could play this, and this would just give me a red die. Uh, or I can you know, discard a card instead of losing a stamina. Uh, let's see, Flew to the Outer Gods. After rolling, discard to defeat one monster, which I'll touch on in a minute. So I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to roll these green dice. So you'd roll them, and you get all six of them, and you're now trying to complete one of these two. So in this case, I completed absolutely nothing. So you're going to take a die, and you're going to remove it from your pool, and then roll again. Roll again. I got three terror, which is terrible. So in this case, I cannot achieve this at all, so I do the terror effect three times. So I, boom, just lose three stamina. And then I lose a die, and then it's my choice whether I want to keep rolling. So I can keep rolling. Didn't get it. Lose a die. So on and so forth. Uh, I did get this, so see, I can complete this, but the problem is I have to lose another stamina. So I can just decide I don't want to do it anymore. 
Um, but another thing you're allowed to do is while you're rolling this, so this probably wasn't a very good example. This is, I think, a red mission. No, it's a yellow mission. Um, probably not the best example. But another thing I could do, let's say I rolled, uh, and I rolled a skull like this. No, like that. I need this skull eventually. I can't complete one of these rows just yet, so what you could do is you could do what's called a focus. You could take this, put this here on your card, you still have to remove one because you couldn't complete anything. Mind you, you're not allowed to focus if you were able to complete a row either. And then you would roll these. So effectively you've lost two dice, but you've made it to where you're ensured you're going to be getting a skull. So I'd roll again, still nothing, so I'd lose one. This focus gets to stay there. And then roll again. Okay, so now I completed the first stage. But now, unless I roll two skulls, it's unlikely that I'm going to complete that next one. So nothing. And in this case, I rolled the terror, but so nothing happens. So these all come off. I do the fail condition, which is I lose a stamina and add a doom. Then my turn's over. Now I should note you're allowed to focus one focus for every person that's at your location. So if you're playing with multiple people and say you have two or three people trying that area, you're allowed to focus multiple dice, but just know you still are going to have to get rid of one as well. So you got to think long and hard about uh, what you're going to do, or what you're going to focus. Now there's a couple other mechanics to do with the portals opening, and then these linking the different portals, and then once they're closed, because uh, like uh, you'll have a portal open, and the portal will open here, so you can no longer access this location. You have to access a portal instead, and once it this is gone, then a seal token gets applied there, and then once all the seal tokens are put down, then big problems happen, and so on and so forth. But anyways, um, once your turn's over, you're going to take this, and you're going to advance the clock three hours, and then you're going to pass this to the next person in line. We usually give this to whoever is next, whoever's left of the current player, because honestly, this thing is a pain in the ass to keep up with sometimes. Um, so that's usually what we do, but it'll go here. Then you're going to go around and around and around and around and around and keep doing that. And, and you know, after each person's turn, you're going to advance it by three hours. Once this strikes midnight, what you're going to do is you're going to look at the bottom of the card that you drew in the beginning. And it says, next time the clock strikes midnight, advance the clock two times. So, we just, boom, start at 6 a.m. Then you're going to draw another one of these cards and perform to the top. So add one Doom to the Doom track. If the investigators have more Elder Signs, then there are Doom uh, tokens on the Doom track. So that sucks, but then this goes here and allows this. Now your ultimate goal on the old one is to acquire whatever the number here is in Elder Signs. If this fills up in Doom tokens, then the old one wakes up and you have to fight them, and I'll explain that in a minute. There's a couple other things with uh, the Silver Twilight and the Sheldon Gang, but I'm not going to really touch too much into that. There's cards that use them and that if you're part of this faction, you get special benefits, stuff like that. And There's ways to spend clues or whatever, uh, which I should also mention, you also have clues. You can use clues to re-roll uh, one sum or all of the dice uh, and not have to lose any. So that's pretty useful. So like if you... If I had that skull, but I didn't get anything else, I can go, okay, I'll spend my clues, send it back, and reroll all of these, keeping this skull, kind of like a focus, and I di still didn't get it, or whatever. So, and then you have a bunch of the different items over there that the bottoms of the cards will just tell you when you do and do not roll it. Uh, so anyways, that's really Elder Sign. So what happens here, last but not least, Actually, I'll explain that in a minute. You have monsters. Now, this black bag does not come with the game. It's something I picked up just because I like black bags. Um, anytime something says to spawn a monster or has... Where is a monster symbol? Okay. This little symbol right here. Then what you're going to do is you're going to reach in this bag. And you're going to pull out a monster. So, for this case... Bam, this guy, I don't even know what he is. A dark young. So, this is the monster. Yeah, I think they go this way. This is the monster. And you're going to first look at all the face-up locations and see if they have something that looks like this on it. If they do, this monster goes there. If they do not, you choose a face-up location and put it at the bottom. So it just makes that mission that much harder. If you have no face-up, then you choose one of the face-down. And then when that card flips, it'll just... Uh, it'll be there. 
some monsters, like Haster, or the King in Yellow, oh god, I've made a horrible mistake. Um, the King in Yellow specifically says, uh, well, no, it's for when he wakes up. Uh, you know, the, they all have their own special little things that affect the game in their own little ways. But um, that's honestly Elder Sign. Uh, but the last but not least, the when the old one wakes up. If this fills up with Doom, then what you're going to do is basically he becomes all of these locations. You can just pack these up right now, and these, this is pretty much where everybody's at. And what's going to happen is you need to try to complete this. Every time you complete this, during your rolls, and it works just like one of these, then you remove a Doom token. Uh, and you still advance this by three hours every time. Once it strikes midnight, the old one attacks. And, for example, here it says when Haster awakens, X in his battle task is equal to the number of monsters in play. Uh, when the King in Yellow attacks, each investigator must either discard one clue token or lose two sanity. So, that happens every midnight. And... This is just going to keep going around until either you get the 13 Elder Signs, or once they wake up, screw the Elder Signs, you're just trying to uh, get rid of all the Doom. I may have missed a few minor things, I don't think I did, but that's basically Elder Sign. It's reasonably fast, cooperative, push-your-luck dice chucker. So let's move on to my final thoughts, shall we? Alright, Elder Sign. Well... I picked up Elder Sign. I was super excited about it. I had actually picked up uh, Eldritch Horror. I love that game. And I was like, okay, you know, this is, I heard it was a light, quicker version of Arkham Horror, which Eldritch Horror is more refined version of. And I was like, okay, that sounds pretty cool. And I downloaded the app on my phone and I really enjoyed it. Um, then I picked, when I had picked this up, and I have to say, I don't like the game. Uh, and I'll explain why. The, I don't know about you, but me, when I'm playing a cooperative game, let alone a cooperative Lovecraft-themed game, I expect to lose probably 80-90% of the time. Eldritch Horror, for example, I think I've beat the game twice. We've probably played it, I don't know, 20 times. I've beaten the game twice, but it's a hell of an adventure and it's an awesome ride getting there. Um, this is just, it's super easy. Um, and now I should probably explain why in my review I did not have the base game. The base game, even the gameplay is stupidly simple. Like, I think uh, the base game I've lost one time, and that's because I fought against Azathoth, and his condition when he wakes up is he the game is just over. Um, he's pretty much the only one that's any challenge whatsoever for that reason. Um, other than that, getting the Elder Signs in the base game, incredibly simple to do. So I picked up, I had heard that uh, the Gates of Arkham expansion made the game harder. And I was like, cool. Uh, picked it up, and it did. It in improved the actual gameplay a lot more. The game is a lot harder. It requires a little more thinking now, especially when you're looking at just a bunch of face-down cards, and you're like, okay, we have nothing but reds out here. Which one do I go to? And <clears throat> so it's got this really cool mechanic, and then you have the Twilight, uh, the, was it the Twilight people and the... Uh, Sheldon gang, they give you discounts, and so you got to figure out who do you want to join, and so on and so forth. So that part's really fun, but it didn't fix the one major area that I have a complaint with Elder Sign. It is easier in the game to say, screw the Elder Signs, get all the equipment you can get, and just let the Elder God wake up. Whatever. Because it's easier to beat them into submission after they wake up than it is to even bother collecting Elder Signs. And that's included in the base game. That is just the easiest way. Unless you're fighting a Zathoth, that is just the easiest way to to win. You will win 99% of the time. Unless you are terrible at rolling. But So if you're looking for a game that is a cooperative dice chucker that isn't very hard, yeah, by all means, pick it up. Uh, I, again, definitely recommend the Gates of Arkham expansion. They it's what the original game should have probably been, but definitely recommend picking it up. It was fun. But if you're looking for anything with any inkling of a challenge, don't bother with it. Honestly, I wound up picking up, uh, what is it, Star Trek Five Year Mission down here, and it actually fills this, the role that Elder Sign should have filled. I like the theme. I'm a huge, I love space, and I love Star Trek, uh, and it's still a push your luck dice chucker. Granted, it's a paste on theme which is what everybody complains about, but it was it's a difficult game. 
and that's how I believe that all cooperative games should be. It should be a hard game, but it should be fun kind of hard. Anyways, but I can't recommend Elder Sign. It's just not a fun game. I uh, don't care much for it. It's too easy. But, again, if you have kids or people who just hate losing or you want an easy cooperative game, why not? It's I think it's like 20 bucks. So, anyways, if you like the show, check me out on Patreon, and I will see you guys next time in the quarantine.